Hey everyone, it's low carbon keto nutrition specialist Amy Berger from toitnutrition.com bringing you, as always, keto without the crazy. We have such a big topic today and I didn't make any notes, so I have no idea how this will go. Won't that be fun? Come on this little adventure with me, won't you? So several of you have asked me to weigh in, no pun intended, on this higher protein thing that is sort of taking the keto world by storm and or turning things into a total upheaval. Um, if you follow the website dietdoctor.com, they are altering a lot of their recipes or putting out a lot of new content that is skewed with, with a higher protein content and cutting back on the fat, so really not classic keto anymore. Um, some things will allow for even a little bit more carbohydrate and um, Diet Doctor is I think the most popular and like highest traffic getting keto low carb website in the world so it's kind of a big deal that they're doing this and they're not the only ones they're just I think most people have probably gotten exposure to it through that um, let me take a step back though with this protein thing Overall, what I'm referring to is this movement now, this growing movement, where people are very deliberately increasing their protein intake, either on an absolute level, meaning that the total amount of protein they're eating is increasing, or they are decreasing other things so that the percentage of calories in their diet from protein is increasing, even if the absolute amount of protein they're eating isn't higher than it was. So the goal really is to just increase the percentage of protein in your diet. Some people do that by just eating more high protein foods. Some people will do it by keeping protein kind of the same and cutting back on carbs and fat. And the, the person who really got this ball rolling, who kind of is the best known for it, is Dr. Ted Naiman. He is an MD out of the Seattle area who is keto and low carb friendly, but most definitely not a zealot about it, not a purist. In fact, he's the one that's kind of like guiding people away from the keto crazy. So I gotta love that. Now, Full disclosure, and, and I'm a little all over the map just because I have to kind of set some, you know, explanations before we get into the details, but I have Ted Naiman's book. It's called The P to E Diet, meaning this is like the ratio, P to E, you know, the ratio. So the protein to energy, that's what P to E is, but I'll get into that later. I just wanted to have like full disclosure. I have the book. Um, I think I also, I had the PDF version and then I bought the hardcover. Um, it is a very expensive hardcover book to own because it's big, it's like oversized, and it has full, every page is a full color image, meme, graphic, infographic. There's, you know, full color, full color recipes, but the, so it's, it's very expensive to print a book like this and it's hardcover. So I have been a huge fan of Dr. Naiman for several years now. Um, I really have always liked his stuff, partly because he, nothing he says is his opinion or faith-based, or if it is his opinion, it's a very educated opinion that he arrived at based on having read a lot of the scientific or medical literature. He goes directly to the studies, like what, what do the data show? You know, what actually happened to these study subjects? And with a really, really solid understanding of physiology and metabolism, that's how he arrives at his things. It's not just like eat nine cups of leafy greens a day for no reason that anyone can explain satisfactorily or like you have to have this much apple cider vinegar. Ted Naiman is not like that. So I'm, I'm a very, very big fan. Um, and I, I've learned a ton from him, so I, I owe him an intellectual debt of gratitude that I hope I pass along to others. But so I just, I just want to, you know, start this by saying I might have a little bias because I really do like Dr. Naiman. There is one thing that I disagree with him about. I finally found the one thing. He's not so big on the advanced 
thyroid testing. And if you've been watching me for any length of time, I might just have to, that might have to just be the point where we disagree. And that's fine. If you agree with someone on everything all the time, 100%, probably something wrong there and you should examine that so good i great i, I can say that no i don't agree with him on everything <laughs> so what is this p to e thing the protein to energy what dr Naiman means by that is the protein to energy ratio that there should be basically there, there's a lot of scientific literature in support of the notion that a higher percentage of your calories from protein can be very beneficial metabolically for a number of reasons. It can facilitate weight loss. It can, um, you can also get very good results with improving things like type two diabetes and other metabolic syndrome type related issues. Like, so even, even if you're not super strict keto, so the protein to energy, and we're talking as a percentage of calories, and so protein and carbs both have four calories per gram and fat has nine calories per gram. So over twice the over double the amount of calories in one gram of fat as there is in one gram of carb or one gram of protein. So um, if you protein for various reasons that I won't get into right now is not usually considered an energy source. Does it provide calories? Yes, but your body has so many other things that protein needs to do that it just doesn't make a lot of sense for your body to rely on protein as its main source of calories when it can get those calories so much more easily from carbs and fat. And I mean, there's plenty of other things for carbs and fat to do in the body, but not like, not like protein. So um, when you increase the percentage of calories in your diet coming from protein, you would look to decrease carbs or fat or both. The, the, the protein calories, basically non-energy calories, protein, compared to calories or you know, macros that can be more readily used for energy, the carbs and fat. And this is creating this huge upheaval because this is not strict keto. For, for some people, it's, it's still mostly low carb. There are some people who have increased their carb intake because they've cut way back on fat. So let's say we are trying, and, and they're aiming for higher protein in their diet, but we want to get the total percentage of calories from fat and carbs down a little bit. The most effective way to do that is to cut back on the fat because if you are concerned about the percentage from of calories then you would want to cut fat because fat has what over double the calories per gram we said right so there are a lot of people they're they're targeting protein at the same time they're cutting way back on fat compared to what they were eating on keto and some of them are increasing carbs from where they were because of the calories the nine versus four in fat versus carbs if you decrease fat substantially, even if you increase carbs a little, the total calories is still going to be substantially decreased because of that large decrease in the fat that you're eating. And so this is like freaking people out because they're starting to think, have I been doing keto wrong all this time? Like, what have I, what have I been doing? Who have I been listening to? Why, what, what is this? Like, why ha have we all been doing it wrong for so many years? And I have so much to say, but I'm glad I didn't remember the most critical point that I want to make. Whether we are talking about keto or any other way of eating, if it's working for you and you are happy with the results you're getting, you don't need to change anything. Please hear me on that because there are people who have been doing perfectly well, perfectly fine. They've lost 50 pounds. They reversed the type two diabetes. All the good stuff is happening. And now they're thinking that they have to like do some crazy new thing. No, 
if you are happy with, with where you are now or you're happy with the rate of progress in terms of your improvement to where you want to be, you don't have to change anything. Just because something new comes along that's working well for a lot of people doesn't mean you have to stop doing the thing you're doing if it's working well for you. So if some of you can stop watching this video now because that's all you needed to hear. If you're doing strict keto or some version of very low carb and you love it and you don't want to do anything else, you're done. Go do something else. Enjoy the rest of your day. The rest of you who are freaking out, stay with me. Um, I'm going to link in the notes for this video to some videos I did on protein. Not long ago, I did one video that specifically addressed women who tend to not eat anywhere near enough protein. Not that you're dying and wasting away from like literally insufficient protein, but for all of the effects that you want to get and all of the good things that you want to have happen and the way you want to feel, most women on ketogenic diets are dramatically under eating protein. So I am total in total agreement with Dr. Naaman on that. And then I did another video on high protein diets and what that even means. What is a high protein diet? Um, and do, are they harmful? Like, like, let's stop being afraid of higher protein intakes and here's why and i also will link below in the notes because i wrote two blog posts very i'm i'm notorious for crazy long blog posts um keto without the crazy not blog post without the crazy <laughs> a blog post with the crazy links i did two very sort of exhaustive detailed blog posts um on why high protein intakes are not harmful for the kidneys and they're not <clears throat> harmful for the bones and <clears throat> i just recorded like five videos before this i'm on a i'm on a real jag of recording videos today so i knew i would need this for this one mm. oh my gosh i've been talking so much to the camera so i am very much in favor of higher protein diets and what you have to understand is that what Ted Naiman is talking about, and, and he's working with Marty Kendall too from Optimizing Nutrition, I'll, I'll put links to everything. What, what he's proposing is nowhere near as radical and earth shattering and different as you think it is. The only reason it seems radical and earth shattering and different is because of the way low carb and keto have been totally mangled and bastardized and warped beyond all recognition the last few years. When I was new to all this, I did the Atkins diet. And frankly, most of you who are having good success on keto are doing the Atkins diet wrapped up in a shiny new bow. There's very little that is new under the sun. And the Atkins diet was not limited in protein. There was no, no fear mongering about protein kicking you out of ketosis or turning into sugar and gluconeogenesis. There was no emphasis whatsoever on having any particular percentage of fat in your diet. There was no macros. Nobody was talking about the percentages of fat and protein and carbs. Um, nobody was putting butter and coconut oil in their coffee in order to reach some totally arbitrary fat percentage. There was none of this. All of this is new within the last few years. And I, I don't even really know where it came from because none of this is grounded in any kind of science that I can tell. You know, what makes the ketogenic state, what makes your body ketogenic, that is generating ketones, is the absence of carbohydrate from your diet. The very, very low insulin level is what does it, not the gobs and gobs of fat. And I've done a million videos on that. So um, all of this is new. In my opinion, what Ted Naiman is proposing is like a normal low carb diet, not ketogenic for most of you, but low carb, yes. He, be, because of the, the P to E, the protein to energy, if the energy calories, the fat and the carbs, still have to be kind of lower-ish, 
then you can't have you know three or four hundred grams of carbs a day you're still going to be watching carbs to some extent but not like keto and um i think there's some problems with this so it is in my opinion not appropriate for everybody that is my opinion you know i can't link any papers for you but um what what i like about this new focus on protein is that there's a focus on protein nobody's fear-mongering that oh that's going to kick you out of ketosis and that's no good for this and no good for that and da, da, da. like it's just that's that's nice to see it's nice to see people eating a larger portion of meat or just protein foods or whatever and it's even nice to see the 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 decrease on emphasis in fat because again those fat bombs the fatty that's new this wasn't part of the low carb and keto world 10 years ago didn't exist and um for me personally it's been very nice to see people posting pictures i my main social media is twitter i i don't like facebook i don't like anything else really and, and youtube but um i i'm a twitter person and people will very often take pictures of their food and like post it and they'll tag ted like that's kind of a stick a pin in that i'm going to come back to that issue but they'll post pictures of their meals and they're losing weight they're feeling great everything's great and the plate is loaded with vegetables sometimes it even has a starch some of these people are eating potatoes they're eating rice um they're eating fruit they're eating beans so they're reintroducing foods that they were like quite literally terrified of six months ago like oh, rice oh my god, i can't have rice i ate i ate two grains of rice oh my god oh my god like it's nice to see the friggin fear subside a little bit because keto is it's beyond insane right now what's going on in the keto world which is why keto without the crazy is so needed um in my opinion but so it's nice to see people not being so afraid of carbohydrate and and the vegetables because the, of the carnivore movement having become so popular too god forbid you should post a plate of your post a picture of your plate and there's one broccoli floret on it or there's you know one spinach leaf oh you're you must be an idiot don't you know about oxalates don't you know about goitrogens what do you you you, you must be dumb you're spending money on crunchy water How, you're such a dummy for eating lettuce oh my god please shut up shut up with your stupid fear-mongering wacko nonsense now there are people who have really severe weird sensitivities to any of these things if that's you don't eat the broccoli don't eat the spinach but stop fear-mongering other people away from these foods that healthy people have been eating for hundreds and in some cases thousands of years you know some of these vegetables are relatively new in the evolutionary sense but even so healthy people have been eating these things for a long long time so um it's it's nice to see and i i personally think i feel better when i eat a substantial amount of vegetables now i'm not saying that the carnivore diet is unsafe like i'm not saying that at all but for me personally i feel better when i eat a fair bit of vegetables so it's been nice to see people posting a lot of vegetable matter um and not being afraid to do it anymore so and and not only posting it and not being afraid but eating those foods and getting better results than they were getting on keto but why are they getting better results on this p to e thing than they were on keto i'll tell you why and this is the issue it's because these people were doing this weird newfangled bastardized keto these are the people who were trying to get 80 percent fat who were eating a crap ton of oil in the coffee and putting butter on everything and you know I don't like like being afraid of the protein limiting protein because of the gluconeogenesis or the keto like if if those people had done a normal low carb or ketogenic diet not only would the p to e not seem like such a radical shift 
they wouldn't need to shift anything because they would have already been eating something closer to that anyway. Um, the, 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 big, the big difference I see is the carbs, really, in the PDE diet. It's the, the ability to eat more carbohydrate because you're eating so much less fat. And I think this is, this is not going to work well for everybody. I have so many pins I need to stick for things I need to come back to. I should have made notes, but I just wanted to like bang out as many videos as I could today. Um, it's, I, I don't even like the word keto, or I guess it's an abbreviation, it's a shorthand. I, I use it because that's what everybody looks for now. That's what everybody searches for. I have always much preferred the term low carb because, and I don't even like LCHF, the low carb, high fat, because what LCHF does is it gives equal emphasis and equal importance to the low carb and the high fat when for many people, not all, but many, the, what makes the diet work and what will get you the results you want is the low carb, not the high fat. What makes, what makes a diet ketogenic and what helps you to sort of rely more on fat for fuel is the lack of the carbohydrate or the very low amount of carbohydrate, not the presence of tons and tons of fat. Um, I wrote a book called The Stall Slayer. It's at stallslayer.com or you can get it on Amazon too as well and it is available outside the US. I, I made this point very emphatically because this is, this is one of the mistakes that I see very often when people are stalled in fat loss. These are the people who th thought they were supposed to eat 70%, 80% fat and not have too much protein and blah, blah, blah. So um, I just lost my train of thought, but yeah, the, the, the whole, if, if everybody had always just thought of this as low carb, we probably never would have gotten to the point of everybody measuring ketones and trying to be in ketosis and being worried about being kicked out of ketosis and all this stuff and gluconeogenesis. We wouldn't have been worried about any of that if the emphasis had always been on and the, the terminology we used had always been low carb. When you say low carb, that's all that matters, low carb. It says nothing about whether you are or are not in ketosis. So it's like a non-issue. And I think um, it's, it's, doing, it's doing two things. You know, the PDE is doing two things. It is, it is radically low, not radically, de depending on how far you take this, you are decreasing your fat a little bit or a lot. And some people are, are um, increasing carbs a little bit. And some of them are just eating more, more of the non-starchy vegetables they were already eating. But like I said before, a lot of people are reintroducing potatoes, rice, beans, fruit, um, even regular bread and stuff like that. You know, if it fits within what you can do and still get the results you want. So it's, it's cool, but what I told, let me, I, I, I want to talk about all the drawbacks and the potential problems I see happening with this, but let me just make sure I've wrapped up this. I just want to emphasize that this is not new. This is not radical. This is not like something crazy that Ted Naiman pulled out of nowhere. This, this is, ba this is like Atkins maintenance. I'm pointing here because I still have the book there. It's like Atkins maintenance, the Atkins induction diet is a strict ketogenic diet. That is where Dr. Westman got the page four food list. He learned from Dr. Atkins and from his head nurse for 30 years, Jackie Everstein. So um, that is a strict ketogenic diet. It's like 20 total grams of carbs or less. That's like, that's keto. The Atkins diet had what Dr. Atkins called the carb ladder. There was an ongoing weight loss phase where you were reintroducing carbohydrate, but you were still losing weight. So that you were reintroducing carbs, but so slowly and gradually that you were still losing weight. And then you would get to the maintenance phase. And that's, that's kind of what I see the PDE diet. There's really no restriction on protein. 
your carbs are still low compared to what most people are eating. If these people are increasing carbs, most of them are not getting more than 100 grams of carbs. And I know that sounds like a lot if you are someone who eats 20 or 30 grams of carbs a day or fewer. 100 grams of carbs a day is still low compared to what most people are eating. And in fact, there, there are no formal definitions for low carb, very low carb, high carb. There's just, I, I, I'm not aware. But there are a couple of papers um, co-authored by some of the more well-known and renowned keto and low carb researchers. And I think, I think Dr. Russman among them, I think he's one of the authors on them, like Richard Feynman, Jeff Bolick and all them. And I think they said a low carb diet is under 150 grams. I would have to double check that. Don't quote me on it. I'll, I'll double check. But, um, so, but even, even if it was like, like a hundred, again, a hundred grams is not ketogenic for most people, but it's way lower than most people get when they're not trying to do any carb restriction. They're just eating everything under the sun. So even though on this P to E thing, people are increasing the carbs, it's still relatively low. And then they're, they're cutting back on the fat. And I would say for some, I mean, everybody approaches it differently, right? Some of the people are just using a little bit less fat than they were. Like if they were eating gobs and gobs of cheese every day, maybe they've just cut back. Maybe they're having like one or two ounces a day, or maybe they've just eliminated cheese or they're just, being more aware of how much extra fat they're using. You know, how much butter am I putting on this? Or how much olive oil am I using on my salad? Like, but then there are other people that are approaching it more like get fat as low as possible. Like now they're eating fat-free cheese, they're eating fat-free yogurt, they're eating fat-free this, low fat that. It's weird to see, like, cause it's because everybody's been eating so much fat forever that like people are purposely seeking out fat free and low fat versions of things now um, because some of them don't have any more carbohydrate than the full fat version. So you're still getting all the, like, like for example, a, a full fat a Greek yogurt, a non-fat Greek yogurt. I, I haven't looked at a container in a while to compare this specific thing, but it's either no more carbohydrate than the full fat version, or it's like one or two grams more. It's like a very tiny increase for a, a very big decrease in the fat. You go from full fat to no fat, same amount of protein, and maybe either the same carbs or just a tiny bit more. So people are just deliberately seeking foods that still come with a lot of protein and much less fat. So even like the meat, they would probably not eat regular bacon most of the time. Maybe they would have turkey bacon or maybe only have bacon like once a week, whereas they used to have it every day. Or instead of eating the fatty ribeye steak, they're going for sirloin or something that's really lean. You know, that 80-20 ground beef, they're doing 90-10 or 93-7 or what, whatever the equivalents are in your countries if you're not watching this from the U.S. Um, but... So yeah, they're just they're just aiming to get more protein with less fat and and either, you know, more carbs or just about the same carbs where they were. It's it's not it's not huge. It's not radical. It's it's only radical because of how not so keto became. And so this is actually a very very nice correction back to not being afraid of a high protein intake. And again, please watch those videos I'll link to below. And um, even not being so terrified of carbs. Because look, yes, there are many of us out there who need to be very strict, who need a ketogenic diet. But there are also a lot of people out there doing strict keto who don't need to be. They can eat more carbs and stay lean, stay healthy, stay, the blood sugar's low all the time, the insulin's low all the time, all the, the, the acne's gone. They, they reap all the benefits, but they don't have to be so strict with the carbs. They can have more carbs. And not only, I, I didn't say they can tolerate more carbs, and here's why. Because it's not just that they can tolerate it and get away with it. It's not just that they can get away with eating potatoes or eating rice or eating fruit they actually feel better 
they feel better when they eat more carbs and they're not gaining weight and they're not triggering, you know, type two diabetes to come back and all that stuff. So, um, and I have had a couple of clients that I have suggested to eat more carbs. They come to me, you know, why do I feel like garbage, keto, this, keto, that? I'm like, because you need more carbs. You should not be doing strict keto. So it's it's nice to see that recognition too, that not only does you know everyone not need keto, and, and it's not just that they have room for more carbs or they can tolerate them, it's that they actually do better with the carbs. And I'm not talking about Pop-Tarts. I'm not talking about, you know, Mountain Dew. Like, I don't know, I'm, I'm not talking about 300 grams of carbs a day. I'm talking about 70 grams, 80 grams, 100 for some of them. So, all right, I'm at 30 minutes. Now let me switch over to the problems that I see that I think are going to come from this. And um, I have been making shorter videos for the most part lately, but this... It's just gonna take as long as it takes because it's important and I don't wanna break it up into pieces. I have been on the record privately with some people that I know, but here I am publicly. This is going to backfire massively for some people. Some people are going to do really, really well, great. Some people are going to take this too far and it's, it's going to blow up. And it's not going to be Ted Naiman's fault. It's not going to be Marty Kendall's fault. It's not going to be Andreas Ehrenfeld's fault. It's not going to be Diet Doctor's fault. It's not. We have a problem in the keto world where people are incapable of nuanced thinking. It's all or nothing. It's black or white. And there's no in between. You're either keto or you're eating every carb in sight or you're... It's just like, and, and, and I've heard, I listen to Ted a lot because I like him and because I learn from him a lot. So I've listened to a lot of podcasts he's done. I've watched a lot of videos and I've read the book and I, I, I follow like over a thousand people on Twitter. There's only a handful of people whose timelines and feeds I go to directly every day so that I don't miss anything. And there's other people I just catch what I can. I go to Ted Naiman's feed every day, sometimes multiple times a day, but that's like a little sickness with me, my, my Twitter addiction. Um, so I, I see what he says. I see the information he's putting out there, but then I see the disconnect between the very rational, logical, sane thing that he says versus how it is interpreted by the great unwashed keto masses. Because now what the, the way that this is going to backfire in part is that people are going to become terrified of fat. Instead of becoming terrified of carbs, they're going to become terrified of fat. Every single thing they eat will be low fat or fat free. They are going to never add oil to their salad. They're never going to, they're just they're going to eat as little fat as possible, right? Because he, here's the thinking. Well, if too much fat is bad, then, then no fat must be good. Then I have to have no fat. Just like, it's just like with keto and the carbs. Well, if too many carbs are bad, then I have to have no carbs. I have to have one gram of carb. Like this is madness and it always has been. Um, so this, people are going to take it too far and they're going to start to not feel well. They're going to start to have psychological problems in addition to physical problems. Now it's not going to happen right away. Like people are going to feel great for a while and then they're going to feel not so great. And I just want to be on the record now as predicting that. And I am, maybe I'll be wrong. I, I, my prediction could be wrong, but I want to be on the record as predicting that yes, some people will do fabulously on this forever. Some people are going to go too far and they're going to do something dumb and stupid and dangerous that is totally unrelated to what Dr. Naiman actually advised, although he's not advising any, you know, he's only advising you if he's your doctor and you have a doctor patient relationship. Everything else he says is just like information, right? But people are going to get themselves into trouble by going to an extreme, which is not what he has ever recommended. So even when I did my videos on the higher protein intakes, especially the one for women, 
I didn't even want to give an amount to aim for. I gave one because I know everybody wants, no, just tell me the number. What's that? So I gave a number, but I also emphasized that you shouldn't really get so hung up on that number. The general overarching principle that you should think about is just increasing protein. It doesn't matter how many grams, just more, more than you're getting now. And that's what he's saying now too. Just He's, he's got these calculators online where you can calculate it down to the gram and the percent and the fraction. You don't have to. I've heard him say this, like, just start goosing the skids, just start tipping things in that direction of a little more protein and a little less fat. So like I said, if you don't weigh and measure anything and you don't want to track anything, if you're having bacon every day, Maybe don't, maybe have it twice a week or maybe have it once a week or maybe switch to turkey bacon and have that every day. And I can't believe the words turkey bacon just came out of my mouth. But if you are looking to decrease fat and increase protein, that's one way to do it. You know, like I said before, instead of fatty meats, instead of a very fatty pork chop, pork tenderloin is extremely lean. Um, the ground beef, instead of the 80-20 or whatever, you, you know, the ground meat, you can get the very, very lean ground meat. Um, if you, you, you know, typically eat a lot of sausages, cut back and eat more skinless poultry and skinless poultry, oh my God, I can't believe I said that. But, um, yeah, shrimp, seafood, most of that's very low in fat. Like you get just a cod filet flounder. That's just like a boneless filet of fish. It's got like, unless it has the skin on it, it's basically almost zero fat. So, you know, canned tuna, a lot of the people doing the PDE diet are doing, um, like I said, a lot of low fat or fat free Greek yogurt, protein powders, whey protein powders are doing shakes. They're doing protein pancakes. You don't, you don't have to go nuts with the numbers, just eat foods that are leaner. Like I said, instead of that ribeye, go for the sirloin or go for just some other, you know, top round roast beef or something. Um, if you used to slather mayonnaise on everything, maybe don't do that anymore. So, um, that's this it's it's gonna backfire it's just gonna backfire for some people and and that's not even let's think about the people who really do need ketosis and i and i think he's never he's never said that that there aren't people who who do you know need ketosis so i'm, I'm not putting words in his mouth i'm just saying this is something that i want to cover here um i think there are people who how should I say this? Um, will get their best results actually being in the ketogenic state. Now, Ted Naiman is mostly focused on helping people with fat loss and metabolic syndrome, type two diabetes related stuff. You know, like hypertension, cardiovascular disease, PCOS, gout, all that stuff. Um, I think, and the triglycerides, whatever. He you know, he's a family doctor. His specialty is not psychiatry. It's not, uh, you know, neurological issues. I, I think I, I don't want to speak for him, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that he would agree that there are a lot of cases that do need a truly ketogenic diet. Like there are some medical conditions that don't really respond without ketones, without an actual state of ketosis. And even, even not though. So if you, there's a doctor named Christopher Palmer, I think he's at Harvard. Um, Harvard does turn out some good nutrition information. Okay. Just, um, there, <laughs> well, that's a whole separate video. Let's not go there. Chris Palmer is a psychiatrist who's super, super keto friendly. He's co-authored a paper or two with Dr. Westman, where they basically totally eliminated somebody's lifelong schizophrenia with the ketogenic diet. And they didn't even know that was going to happen. That was a happy little surprise. This woman was obese and had type two diabetes and she came to Dr. Westman's clinic and they put her on keto and magically her, you know, lifelong hallucinations just stopped and the schizophrenia just stopped. So there are some people who really, really need to be strict. And, um, I, I think even beyond 
And, and that's, I think there are other psychiatric conditions that will respond specifically to a ketogenic state. It could be anxiety, it could be bipolar, but that's, you know, research is kind of like emerging in that area. I just want to be clear that an actual very, very, very low carb ketogenic diet is going to be required for some people. And even if that's not you, even if you don't have a psychiatric condition or a neurological or neurodegenerative issue, there are some people, and I've mentioned this in many previous videos, who don't get what I call that magical keto pixie dust. That doesn't sprinkle down upon them unless they are in ketosis. And some of those things might include the, um, the absence of hunger, like the just, you're just not that hungry. You used to have to snack every two hours. You had to have a granola bar or a piece of candy. And now you don't even think about food for five hours between meals. So that's, that's one of them. For some people, it's the brain fog. Some people, it, it could be um, maybe sugar cravings. You know, there might be some people who, if they do start to reintroduce some of those sweeter and starchier foods, that's a slippery slope. That might, you know, if, it's easier to control portions of certain foods than others, but if having that stuff is going to make you go on to crave more, more and more either of that stuff or more and more sugar and starch from anywhere you can get it, then that is maybe not the greatest idea for you. I, I do think there are some people who really do best on, on keto keto, but <clears throat> even that being said, and I think it's time for another sip, two sips. Even that being said, I think there's room for both. There's room for strict keto and there's room for PE. And here's why. Because this was the freaking Atkins diet 50 years ago. So, or close to 50 years ago. Like I said, the Atkins induction phase, which was in, in the book as Dr. Atkins wrote it, it was only two weeks. That is a strict ketogenic diet that was super, super low carb and no limitation on protein, no limitation on protein. No, I don't think he limited fat, but there was no emphasis on like loading up on fat just for the sake of loading up on fat. Dr. Atkins was more like, finally, you can enjoy butter. You can enjoy heavy cream, but he wasn't like, put, put a cup of heavy cream in your cup of coffee and like melt butter on everything. Like he, he never said that. So, but, but like I said, the Atkins plan, if you are someone who really does well on keto or gets your best results on keto, maybe you do keto for three months or six months or, or, or a year. And then you do what Atkins said to do 50 years ago that everyone's freaking forgot about, forgot 10 about, and you gradually increase the carbs. So you find your personal sweet spot of how much carb can I consume and still be happy with how I look and feel. And in fact, that is exactly what Westman and I wrote about in End Your Carb Confusion. We, we prefer that most people would start at phase one, which is strict keto, but depending on your situation, you might not need to, you might be able to start with a higher carb intake. But we also say in that book that you might not need to stay keto forever. If you love it and you don't want to ever eat fruit again, you don't want to ever have a potato again or a bowl of rice or black beans or whatever, you don't have to. You can do keto forever and ever if you want. But let's say you do keto, you do our phase one and you lose 100 pounds and you reverse your diabetes and everything's great. What if you do want to have more carbs? we walk you through how to do it and how to do it very gradually and very systematically so that you don't regain the weight and you don't trigger all the health stuff to come back. So I feel like you could do well on keto for a while and then ratchet things up slowly, but ratchet them up and you might end up on the P to E diet for maintenance. For your long-term maintenance, P to E might be great. And 
what else can I say about this? 44 minutes, that's like the longest video I've had in a while. Um, let, me, let me go back to like stuff I said earlier. <clears throat> this is not that radical. It only seems radical because of how off the deep end keto became. If we had all just done low carb all along, this would not even, nobody would even be talking about this. And if, if, if the protein fear mongering had not gotten so completely out of control, nobody would be thinking this was anything new or strange or weird. Um, and, hmm. Hmm. What else can I say about this? Because I don't want I don't want to end I don't want to stop filming and then remember like five you know really important things. Um, hmm. I don't know I, I'm gonna say something a little unpopular but it's my opinion and I've already expressed how much I love and respect Ted Naiman so this is not an insult to him. I've seen so many people on Twitter write about the book, the PDE Diet book, like, this is the greatest health book I've ever read, this is the, the health bible, I'm never going to read another health book, this is, the, like, everyone should read this, and frankly, I disagree. I don't think this is a book for beginners. It's a little advanced, it's a little high level. Ted Naiman is outstanding and a extremely talented with making memes and images and infographics absolutely like like those pictures speak a thousand words if you know what you're looking at if you know how to interpret it he's got diagrams of like hydraulic levers and 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 storage tanks of you know fat versus carbs and like i just don't it's it's not the book i would recommend to start people out it's really not um I think it's an excellent book. Like, I bought it. I paid a lot of money for it. I have the PDF version too. Of course I think it's a good book. I just don't think it's the book. I don't think it's a great book for beginners and it's not, it's it's just not the one that I would recommend that somebody read first. Um, it's a it's a fabulous book. It's, an, it's a dynamite book if you are already starting with at least a, a good knowledge base of some of this physiology, I think. But... I could be wrong about that because there's a lot of other people on social media saying this is the best book ever. This is the only book anyone should ever read. So, you know, that's, it's only my opinion. And certainly the, the emphasis on protein, like I said, is actually nice to see because I'm so tired of the fear mongering with the protein and, um, I guess I'll just emphasize again, because I know that so many people out there are so concerned about the numbers. And like I said, Naaman has websites where you can plug in what you're eating and it'll show you the ratio and this and that. People are gonna start becoming obsessed with their P to E ratio, just like they became obsessed with keto macros. And this is, <clears throat> psychologically it's not gonna be good for everybody and um, just the obsession with the numbers again trying to hit a certain number or I can't have this I can't have that because it doesn't fit like I again and, and this is not Dr. Naaman's fault this is he what he says is very measured and very sane and, and what people take from that and go do with their food is just like, what? What the hell? Why are you doing that? Like, wh what in what Dr. Naaman said possessed you to do that? Um, so if you're interested in this, just start eating more protein and cut back a little on fat. If you want to measure every freaking molecule, do that. I don't think you need to. I don't think Dr. Naaman wants you to do that. Um, so just if, if you've been deliberately restricting protein stop unless unless you have to do that for some reason that is you know like medically supervised just stop being afraid of protein um don't go out of your way to load things up of fat and then i did i remembered the, the pin that i stuck i wanted to come back to, i said people post pictures of their food 
and they tag Ted in it so that he can like comment and you know weigh in and, and grant his approval, anoint the food, and it's kind of I'm a little bit disturbed by it to be honest with you. Not not by the fact that Ted like hey great job or thumbs up you know more that people are literally seeking his approval for what they're eating. Like oh did is, does Daddy approve? Is he pleased with my with my meal? Do you like my my fat free yogurt and my cottage cheese? Does does Ted give me his blessing? Daddy has given his blessing. It's like it's disturbing to me that grown adults are posting food for other grown adults to like yay or nay. You know, it's and now not I mean they're not literally saying hey Dr. Neiman am I allowed to eat this or like can I have this but they're like hey take a look at this or what do you think of this. Why? Why are you doing it? Why don't you just post the food and say, God damn, doesn't this look delicious? Look what I'm having for dinner. And don't tag Ted Naiman in it. Okay, now I can calm down. I think I've said everything I need to say, but it helped that I had already done those other two protein videos that should totally dispel any lingering doubts you have about the fact that it's okay to eat more protein. Um, if you want to cut back on the fat, that's fine because you know in our keto made simple masterclass with adapt your life that is definitely one of the big aha moments that people have when they see our food list oh oh i see what i was doing wrong oh wow okay thanks for setting me straight like right off the bat it's and it's because so and, and that's another thing too so remember i said that um what was i going to say the the page four dr westman's food list is based on the atkins induction um, no, now I just lost my whole train of thought. That's what happens when these videos are so long again and I don't make notes. What was I saying? Blessing the food. Look at what I'm eating. The what am I doing wrong? Right, right, right. The only real difference between the P to E diet and Dr. Westman's page four is the carbs. On P to E, you can have more carbs. Dr. Westman's page four has always been and probably always will be 20 total grams of carbohydrate or fewer per day. It is really strict, but there is no limit on protein. I want to go get the list that's hanging on my fridge over there. Or no, actually I just, I gave it to somebody. Okay. The language on the list with regard to the zero carb protein foods like beef, pork, chicken, eggs, lamb, seafood, whatever, or zero carb or close to it. It says something like, eat as much of these foods as you like until you are comfortably full, or it might say comfortably satisfied. Eat as much of these as you like until you are comfortably full. It doesn't say eat as much as you like, but no more than eight ounces in a meal, or eat as much as you want, but no more than a hundred grams in a day. Eat as much as you want of those foods until you're full. What is limited and has always been limited is the fat. Dr. Westman coming from Dr. Atkins was never telling people to just load up on fat, 80% fat, because he knows that screws a lot of people over and that's why they don't lose weight. That page four food list, the amount of heavy cream per day is limited. The oils, the butter, the mayonnaise are limited. The cream cheese, it's limited because not because of the carbs people sometimes ask is it because of the carbs and the heavy cream no it's because of the fat if you are not specifically aiming for some like crazy high p to e ratio if you are eating those protein foods to, to comfortable fullness and you're eating because you're not aiming for any PD, you're just eating. You might be eating bacon, sausage, fatty lamb, fatty beef, and pork. So you're already getting plenty of fat with those. You don't need to be adding lots and lots of extra concentrated fats and oils. So those have always been limited. You know, it was, it's, it's like a very, very, very low carb diet. And that's it. It's kind of unlimited-ish in protein, and the fat is a little bit limited. The, the main difference with P to E is the carbs. So um, I'm going to stop shy of an hour. I, I hope this was helpful. This was 
mostly a stream of consciousness for me to get my own thoughts out, but many of you asked me to do this. And um, I, I hope this has cleared things up for you or made, you know, like allayed your fears. You're not like freaking out anymore. This isn't as big a shift as you think it is. If strict keto or whatever you're doing now is working, keep doing it and don't change. If you don't need a change, don't change. Don't be taken in by this shiny P to E and the protein and oh, the gut. If you are happy with how things are or with how they're going, keep doing that. If you do need a change, then either check out the Keto Made Simple Masterclass or go for the plan that has more carbs. Check out the P to E, you know? Um, yeah, I, I hope this was helpful. It's a very controversial issue. And, and as always, I don't favor any approach. I favor you doing what works. And not only what works, but what works and what you enjoy. Because it doesn't matter how effective any way of eating is if you actually don't like the food. If you don't like the food that you are permitted to eat or that you can have, it doesn't matter how well the diet works because you're not gonna stick to it. So I, I'm, I'm not gonna tell you do keto or no, do P to E or do this, do that. Do what works best for you. If you need help figuring out what works best for you, you know, consider booking a consultation. There's a link below. I do private one-on-one -on -one consultations if you are interested. So um, that's it. Now I can stop talking. All right, I, I hope this was helpful and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.